Okay, okay, I know. Not everybody's interested in painting landscapes. I agree, I know the feeling. Um, when I started out, I wanted to learn how to paint a little bit of everything. Uh, landscapes, animals, still life, even flowers. And uh, for a long time, I thought, what are people going to think of this big strapping young man painting flowers? But I said, uh, flowers are beautiful. They're part of nature's creation. So I wanted to learn how to paint them. So thanks for stopping by. I'm Wilson Bickford. I'm going to show you how I paint roses. Um, every artist has their own bag of tricks as far as the techniques that they use for whatever it is they're painting, whether it's flowers or trees or anything else. I can only show you what I've learned and how I like to do mine. I'm, I'm going to use a black uh, canvas today that's primed with my black gesso medium. Uh, prior to that, I'm going to show you a little sample here on, the, uh, on this test canvas. Um, I'm using one of my panels today for the actual painting. It's just one of the Wilson Bickford Signature canvas panels. Um, would they have a medium tooth? They're good for all uh, applications. Um, primarily, the ma majority of this canvas today is going to be covered with this uh, number 10 flat brush. It's incredible what you can do with a flat brush if you know how to use it. Um, I'm going to give you a little test shot on this sample canvas right here first, just to give you a heads up what's coming. Um, on my palette, I have cadmium red deep, cadmium red light hue, a little bit of ivory black, sap green, emerald green hue, cadmium yellow pale hue, and titanium white. Um, I'm going to do red roses on this black background eventually here, but um, just prior to doing that, I want to give you a little primer on this uh, test canvas. I'm going to thin this down just a little bit. I've got some clear medium over here, my fast flow clear, Bickford fast flow clear medium, which I'll be putting on the black canvas um, prior to starting that. But roses are basically kind of a round shape. The, tr the key is they're basically round, not perfectly round. So if I get a, an idea of the size that I want, I simply pull in some of the outside petals. And they're going to be kind of scalloped and irregular. This is actually the mid-tone. Flowers are one of the few things that I actually start with the mid-tone rather than the darks. Most things you're starting with your dark tone and then layering highlights, mid-tones and highlights over that. These I actually start with the mid-tone. And there's a reason for that. It tends to work better that way. But see, that's starting to look like a flower already. And then on the inside, now this is a rose that is facing you right directly, full on. If I take a little bit of black into that mixture, I want to darken the inner core of that. And then I kind of blend it out. I want that to look deep. So you soften the perimeter of that. Blend it out. You could actually use a, a mop brush, something like this if you wanted. Usually I just use the number 10. You can use a nice soft mop brush like this and fuzz that edge out. From there, I'm going to wash the brush out and dry it off because I want to come back with my highlighting. Now highlights uh, on red, the general rule of thumb is to use something orange. Red is a really hard color to work with because you can't simply add white to it to get your highlight because if you do that, it turns pink and that'd be great if I was doing pink roses. It took me a long time to figure out that uh, you want to use something in the orange family. Now you could either add yellow to your red or you can just use an orange. Now see if I take some of this cad red light, even though it's classified as a red, it's a very orangey red. I'll use that for the highlighting. I'm going to pull this together and mat it out a little bit to a nice chiseled edge. This brush, this number 10 bristle brush of mine, and actually it's not a bristle brush, it's a synthet synthetic bristle, but this brush is actually just such a nice brush to work with. Now, if I come in and I just kind of touch with the end, you get those little foreshortened petals that you're actually seeing the end of. You're actually seeing the foreshortened edge of those. So I just kind of walk these around in the middle. They're usually quite full and clustered together. And then I do what I call an eyebrow st stroke, which looks like this. They're just little eyebrows. You start the stroke with less pressure. You increase pressure through the middle of the stroke and then come back skinny on the end of the stroke. And those are petals that are kind of starting to open up a little bit. And those kind of go around that little nucleus of the foreshortened ones. 
You see a flower blooming there? And I'm starting to see it myself. So you can take these out a little ways. You know, it's not too far, maybe a row or two. And then you're going to reach the outside edge, the outside petals on the very outside edge, where you can just kind of come in like this. This is a pull-away stroke, which I'm pulling in and letting it fade off into the dark. The key is leaving that darker red tone between all your layers of petals. If you lose that, you lose all the depth within the flower. And see, now I can really come in and kind of accent these outer edges and get those little points on that roses are kind of noted for. Not every petal is pointed like that, but some of them I make sure that they are because that's kind of characteristic of roses. So even that flower is going to bloom right before your eyes. So basically that's what I want to show you today um, on this black canvas. So I'll take that down. I'll probably bring this canvas back up when I get to the leaves and give you a little primer on those. So basically I'm just going to take my two inch scenery brush and I, ha I have some of the Bickford Fast Blow Clear Medium here on the disposable palette down here. I want to wet this canvas down and just lubricate it a little bit which will make the colors flow on a little easier, give me blendability. Doesn't take much, just a nice thin coat will do it. Something like that. And like I said, most of the painting is going to be done with this brush. This flat will cover a lot of turf. So I'm actually just going to rinse the brush out. And I'm going to start back in with that red that I had when I started that demo just a few minutes ago. I'm going to take some of the red. And when you're doing florals, you almost have to be a floral arranger. You can't just throw them on there. You have to think your composition. They talk about a C curve and a shallow S curve. So I'm thinking I'm going to have one of these big prima donna roses maybe right about here somewhere. So I just kind of find it on the canvas. I'm going to say that's going to be there. And if I went with a shallow S shape, I'm going to say that maybe there's going to be a bud up here somewhere like that, off center. And come down around and maybe one down here somewhere. Something like that. Now it's a real lazy S. It's not really an S, but just don't line them up on top of each other. From there, now the buds are basically just a teardrop shape. So those are pretty simple. Now they're going to look a lot different once I put some highlighting on them. If you're doing tulips, they kind of start out the same way, same shape. You just do different things for the uh, highlighting and for the petal structure. Maybe something about like that. The big one is just like I showed you on the other canvas where I kind of pull from the outside in. Get that irregular scallop shape. Now this background looks pretty flat because it is. It's just flat black. So I'm going to change that here momentarily. I'll put a little bit of accent color in there before I go too far. It's easier to put that in now rather than later when I got all my stems and leaves and stuff in. See, I just kind of base that in like that. I know that rose is going to get a little bigger as I develop the outside edges. So that's not a big deal. I'm going to go back with that touch of black and some of the red like I did before. I'm going to make sure that's a little darker. Sometimes I use a little purple. Just something a little darker. I want the inside of that flower to look like it has depth. And I'll come back to this mop brush. Remember this from the last time? Just kind of fade that out a little bit, smooth it down. Because we got a lot of paint to put over the top of that. There we go. So far, so good, huh? Um, I'm thinking, uh, just in the interest of uh, visual appeal, I'm going to take a little bit of this red. Now, this is going to look awful for a minute. Hang with me. A lot of times it's very common to take your floral color, whatever flowers you're doing, if they're yellow or blue or red or whatever the case might be, and you incorporate a little bit of that into your background. It doesn't look like much now, but you wait till we get done. It'll show up a little better 
You just want to tie your background into your subject. And probably by the time I get some of the green leaves going, I'll put a little touch of that green in the background as well. Now I'm going to soften that out. I don't want it quite so choppy and harsh as that. So I'll come back with my mop brush once again and just kind of fuzz that in a little bit. See how it makes the background look like it's not so flat and solid like the flat black was? It just opens it up a little bit and it kind of ties everything together, gives you color harmony. Alrighty, so far so good. Now personally I like to put my greenery in next um, because it's easier to kind of get the stems in if I get into the red because I have to develop the red petals later anyway. Uh, it gives me a chance to correct it then. So like I said, this is the way I do them. So you'd have to kind of just practice the techniques. I've seen a lot of other artists do roses through the years and sometimes I, I hate to say it, but sometimes they don't look as much like roses to me. So I've kind of developed my own way of doing them. <coughs> to me, they look more realistic. I'm taking sap green, emerald green hue, and a little bit of white. I have to check the value against this black canvas. This looks pretty dark on the palette in reality, but I think it's plenty light enough to show up against this dark background. I just got to make sure. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to kind of touch on the stems. Now, a lot of people tend to want to do this. A lot of people have more of a tendency to want to do this and just pull a stem down. That's fine, but see how it's a little wider here, a little skinnier there? It's very hard to maintain the same pressure on that and get an even line. So usually I don't do that, but usually I prefer to work across a little bit like this. Again, and it boils down to your way of doing it and whatever is comfortable for you. And I'm just going to let that kind of fade out a little bit towards the lower portion of the canvas. The stem will be hooked onto the back of the middle of this flower. So you can't have it coming out somewhere where it's not going to be. It's going to radiate right towards dead center. And maybe this one can come in this way a little bit. Even though they're not in a vase, you don't see a vase per se. You want them all to kind of funnel towards a common point. If you just have them going at the stems every which way, it just has no symmetry and it's really usually awful looking. Um, so composition, like I said, you've almost got to be a floral arranger for some of this stuff. I'm going to wipe my mop brush off and just fade these stems away at the base a little bit. Down into the shadows. Out of sight, out of mind we call that. Now as far as the leaves go, I'm going to still use this round brush, or round brush, flat brush, excuse me, and some more of the same color. I'm just running out of it here so I'm mixing up a little more on the fly. We chisel the brush together like we've been doing. If you get that matted together with a lot of paint, it'll hold that really nice precise chiseled edge, which is what we want. So as far as the leaves and stems, I just kind of pull out a skinny stem. The leaf stroke is simply one of these eyebrows almost. I just press down like that. I come around on the other side underneath and I do the same thing and I bring them together. It's that simple. And sometimes I can do them like this if they're looking at a profile, you're seeing them from the side. I can simply take it out and twist the brush and bring it back to the edge for the side ones. That simple. Yes, it's going to take some practice if you've never done that. They're going to look like they're falling right off my brush. But they're really not too difficult. A little bit of practice will go a long ways. So don't be afraid to give those a shot. I'm going to mix up more of this green here because I'm running out. And here we go. So I'm going to put some leaves on here. Um, let's say something over on this side. Roses are kind of known for having a cluster of three leaves down below this, the actual blossom part. Not all of them, but a lot of times if you look at photos of them, you'll see where there's like a stem with three on it. Maybe over here I'll put one like this. See how this color jumps off that dark background?
that's why I like using the dark background for florals a lot of times. I don't always, but it's very striking, especially if you put yellow roses on here. It's all in the wrist. Um, once you learn how to do this, they will literally fall right off your brush just like, the, like they look like they're doing here. A lot of people say you make it look so easy. Well, I had to practice this just like everybody else does. Okay, that should be enough to give you the idea, at least. Um, I would probably want to come back and highlight those a little more. So I'll wipe the brush off. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow pale and a little bit of the emerald green, a little touch of white. Now this is a really bright, vibrant color, and I know that. I could tone that down if I chose to, but I, just for the sake of camera and to get some nice color in this, I'm going to leave it kind of vibrant like that. Again, when you're painting at home, get a color that you like. In reality, these probably wouldn't be quite that bright neon green, but I kind of like it. You have to please yourself before you please anybody else when you're painting. So I kind of like that extra pizzazz in that color right there. It's all good. Painting is one of the things that nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. It's your interpretation, so you do it your way. Just like these are the way I do my roses. It's my way. So I put a little extra light on those. Don't do every single one. It gets a little boring, too monotonous, too predictable. Um, at this point, I haven't really had to think too much of a light source, but I'm going to say that the light's coming from the left. So I'm going to put a little extra light on the stems. Again, don't highlight the stem right from one end to the other. It's a little too monotonous and boring. Just enough to kind of bring it out of there. And see, right now I'm at the point where I want to duplicate these strokes that I showed you earlier on. It's just all more of the same. I'm going to do those little eyebrow strokes, the little foreshortened ends, and then pull those outside petals in, and we'll have us a painting. Now to soften that, I wipe the brush off. To make the stems rounded, you want a soft transition from the light to the dark. So see, I'm depositing this light more on the left-hand side, and then I wipe the brush, and I just kind of touch and tap very lightly to melt the right hand side of that green, the light green, into the dark green. I want the light coming from here. So it needs to wrap around slowly into shadow to look rounded. So I don't, because I don't want the stem to look square, obviously. Okay, now with the green in my brush, I've got to wash that out and come back to that highlight flower color that I talked about. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. Remember I said I was going to incorporate some of that green into my background? Um, I'm going to take some of this uh, darker green, not the real light stuff. And this is going to look awful for a second. I'm just going to put a few little touches of that, and then I'll blend it in. Um, this will kind of tie everything together a little more so. Open up the background somewhat. The idea is to leave it really soft and muted, just kind of there, not in your face. All right. It looks like you got stuff further back in the mix there somewhere. All right, maybe a little brighter wouldn't hurt a thing. Let me try a little touch of that. I'll mix the two together, the light and the dark. Painting is nothing but a series of adjustments. Sometimes something you think is going to work doesn't. I thought the other light color was going to be way too light, so it, I guess it's not. So I'm going to try and put a little bit in there so it holds up a little more. There, it's a little brighter. Subtlety is the key. That looks pretty good. Put a little extra light stuff there. But you really, I'm not trying to paint leaves or anything. I just want color in there. So notice how I just kind of blur it out of focus, and it's really nothing more than just a smudge of color. But that really ties in with all the other stuff that's in that painting. So you just kind of dance it in there, here and there. Don't do anything symmetrical. Don't do north, east, south, and west with it and have four corners. Just kind of put it in throughout. I missed one little spot here to blend. Okay, now we're going to move on to uh, the highlighting. I'm going to take some of the orange, a little bit of white. I'm going to put a little bit of that clear medium with it just to thin it down a little bit. Um, 
wet and wet like this this is still very wet and I've got a lot of paint there so I have to thin this next coat down just enough to get it to flow over the top of that notice my brush I'm really matting that together to that really nice chiseled edge this number 10 flat brush is excellent I went through a few of these in the evaluation process trying out different brushes and I finally hit on just the exact one this is perfect for what I like to use it's not only good for florals, it's good for anything that you'd use a straight square brush for. Uh, an old barn, a tree trunk, fence post, whatever. Okay, on the inside is where all those little foreshortened petals are. And you're kind of looking at the edges of them. They're kind of doing this. You're looking right at the blunt ends of them, like your fingers, fingertips. So I just kind of randomly touch these in here they're concentric they go around each other once you come out a certain ways you can start switching over and do the eyebrow stroke that's these same type of petals but they're curled in a little more so you're seeing a little more width or girth of them and that's when I start doing these See, it's all in the wrist I just press very lightly at the beginning of the stroke, a little heavier through the middle of the stroke, and then light again on the end of the stroke, so it's tapered. Nothing to it. And sometimes, depending on the size that you've already uh, established here, this is a little bigger than the one I did in the sample. I think I can take these out another row, just to fill it in a little more before I get to the outermost petals. Let's see how I'm maintaining dark in between each and every row of petals. If you start bumping them together and you lose that separation, your flower is going to get really flat. Let's see here I'm pulling from the outside in and I, it's a pull away stroke which means I'm pulling it this way from the outside in but as I pull inward I pull the brush away from the canvas so it gets very light and just kind of tapers off leaving that dark in there that's probably the trickiest of the strokes but since this is wet it doesn't work good on this dry board here but since this is wet it blends in and notice all my strokes are going towards the center of the flower no matter where I go around here they're going right towards the dead center that's where these petals hook on a, on a common point on the back of that flower where the stem is so the direction is critical I'm going to overlap that stem just a little bit See that? And it pushes that bud back a little farther. Here comes the flower. Now I can come back and re-highlight this a little bit brighter, which I will do here in just a second. See, this is where I can kind of come around and really play up the outside angles of that just get a really pleasing shape I don't want it perfectly round I want it kind of irregular so every now and then you'll see me pull a petal out a little farther so it's not too symmetrical if it looks too open in some areas I can go back in and squeeze in another little one of those eyebrows here and there so it just kind of gives it a little more fullness okay that's looking pretty good I think now on the buds um, we're going to have some highlighting on those. I just kind of go down the side and blend it on the inside edge. If you wanted, you could take your mop brush to fine-tune that blend a little bit. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. I want to put some extra snap in it. So I'm going to wipe this brush off. I'm going to come back lighter. Um, like I said, I don't want to get too carried away with the white. The white's going to make it go too pinkish. So if I take some of the cad red light, which is kind of an orangey red as far as reds go, and a little bit of cad yellow, pale, I am going from this color to this, a little bit lighter and brighter. It's better to lean it towards orange than it is towards pink. It'll tend to look more like a red rose. If I think the light's coming from this direction, that's where I'm going to target it from. I'm going to lighten up. I'll have to put just a touch of white with that. 
I'm going to kind of target that side, left hand side. A lot of paint on the brush and just a deft stroke. And I can blend that in a little bit on the inside. Um, sometimes you'll see like a curled over edge here where there's the other petal meets on this side and I just kind of wiggle and jiggle and put that curled edge on there. Sometimes you'll see a little touches in the middle where there's light spilling over and just hitting the inside petals that are wrapped around on the inside of that. And then when you do either your main prima donna rose, which is the subject of this, the focal point, don't do every petal. I kind of dance around and hit a little here, a little there, but not a lot everywhere. Highlighting is the icing on the cake, and you don't want to overdo it if you can help it. Add a little more white and yellow to that to get, to get it to pop a little more, especially on camera. Make sure that that's showing up for you. There we go. Looks a little better. But the light's coming from the left. I'm kind of thinking in terms of where that's going to hit the strongest. Like I say, red is a tough color to work with, so... You have to kind of work with it a little differently. Think in terms of highlighting with a little bit of orange rather than white. That doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you're doing a, a red rose or a red apple. It's the same. See how that little bit of extra light really makes that jump? Okay. So see, wet on wet is not all about mountains and waterfalls and landscapes. You can do so much stuff. Really can. Um, I do geraniums and lilacs and daisies and other flowers as well. So if you want some more in-depth uh, instruction, check out my DVDs. I got some full-length DVDs. This is just a little quick lesson to kind of shed some light on some of the mystery behind the technique and get you started. But uh, check out WilsonVickford.com and some of my other DVDs and lessons. I hope you enjoyed this. Give these roses a try. Don't forget this number 10 bristle brush. It's your best friend when you're doing florals. Take care till next time. We'll see you again.